Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the video. I just wanted to get this out of the way quick. We have a little bit of housekeeping. If you don't want to hear it, you can skip to this timestamp here and get on with the video. But for those that uh, want to stay around, I have some news. So we have a Facebook page now. Tall Garage is on Facebook. I use Facebook a lot. That's where I buy a lot of my parts on Marketplace. And that's where I get a lot of my uh, information. So I'm going to try to post uh, lots of updates on uh, Facebook now, on the Facebook page. Please come and uh, join the group. And um, I'd love to hear about your projects and what you're doing and messing around with. And if you have any questions, you know, we can brainstorm and figure stuff out together. Also, I am going to try to post more on my Instagram, which... I have, and uh, I was using it a lot last year, and um, I haven't been using it much. So we're going to try to post more on that. And finally, I have decided to start a Patreon. Uh, a lot of people have been asking why the project updates have been so slow, and part of the reason is uh, money. Um, I got bills, I got kids, you know, uh, normal people uh, excuses. I, I'm sure we, we all have them, right? Um, so I'm not asking for any money but if you would like to contribute to the project so they might get done a little bit faster uh feel free it's not much i believe it's going to be five bucks so if you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee uh every month <laughs> that would be great um like i said no pressure to do it it's just there to help out uh and in the future you know we might try to get some merch uh that's always fun right everybody might want to have a, a tall garage uh hat or a tall garage shirt which will only come in tall sizes so you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's it. Um, enjoy the video and thank you for all your guys' support. Okay, everybody. Today, I want to go over a little bit more about uh, how we welded this and some other uh, measurements to help you guys understand how to do this yourself, right? So... Here is the cylinder head, and as I said before, I did it in two pieces instead of three. Uh, three pieces would probably be a little bit better in terms of getting your bore spacing more exact, but I think this is fine. Uh, starting off, uh, I wanted to do it this way to get the hang of it before I invested in more expensive cylinder head. So if I do this again in the future, it'll probably be some square ports and I'll do it in three pieces. <clears throat> but anyway, so uh, we welded it all the way around um, to seal up the wire jacket. This bolt hole here, uh, we opened it up to, I believe, three quarters of an inch and we plugged it with a solid plug of aluminum and we all welded it all the way around and we did the same thing up here so this part of the wire jacket should be sealed <clears throat> then we go around to this side and here's the other side where we put one of them slugs in and it's welded all the way up and then down this side and into this hole here. That's the other hole that we slugged. And it's welded all the way around top. And all the way up. <clears throat> uh, this side is just structural. This does not actually seal up the uh, wire jacket. But just welded in there. And then we weld it all the way up. Uh, the side of this hole here. And like I said, it's around top, so it's welded all the way around top, all the way down here, and back to the bottom. So, <clears throat> when we put these two uh, bolt holes back in, we should have um, about an eighth of an inch of wall remaining between the hole and the wire jacket, which will be solid. So, this should be watertight. I know that's the thing a lot of people say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. But I believe this should work. Now to give you a bit more of a visual, I have this cutaway section here. So what we did is we welded all of this, right? All of this. Okay, 
Now, obviously, you can't get your torch inside the wire jacket to weld this and this, okay? And you also can't get in the bolt hole to weld this and this. Now, one way we thought about doing it was cutting away this section of the bolt hole so you can get your torch in there and then sleeving it and welding it back up. But we didn't have to do that. We ended up just sleeving it. So what sleeving it did, right? So you have a solid slug of metal in that hole. And then you drill through the center of it. So you still have all that sidewall there. And then it's welded on the top and bottom. Bottom and top. So should be watertight. Okay. Now. We'll show you the head gasket again, since I have it sitting here. So what we did is we centered, we centered this uh, chamber and we centered this chamber because the LS bore spacing is four inch 40, four inch 400. And the four 300 is four inch 480. So it's 80 thousandths more. So we centered this and we centered this to give us the least deviation between uh, these cell these uh, one two three four no one two three four these four cylinders the least deviation compared to the other ones now like I said if you did it if you did it in three pieces you could center up these these and these all uh, so you'd be like extremely close but like I said I believe this will work so that's what we went with um, now we'll get the gasket on here and we've uh, opened up these bolt holes, but all the bolt holes should clear. I've already had the head sitting on the block with the studs in it before we welded it and it fit. So I don't see no reason why it wouldn't fit now. And if it does, we'll just have to touch the holes a little bit, but they're very close. We are going to put uh, dowel pins in each end of the head um to replace the dowels that we're not going to be using anymore in the bowl in the bowls and all we really have left to do is put these two bolt holes in uh have the surface cut and i might have to clearance uh this part right here of the head where the push rod will be coming through that's it that's it the head is done otherwise uh, other than that so Real quick, let's check what the length of this thing is for all those interested. So it is, it is 28 and 7 sixteenths, it looks like. Like exactly. So if you're trying to follow along and make your own, that is how long I made mine. And you will know if it works sooner or later. If you guys have any more questions, put them down in the comments. I'll try to make another video or answer them in the comments. And we're making progress, but progress is slow when you're doing it on, on a budget, right? So uh, thank you for tuning in. And we're going to step over and put this on the block for a little bit and we're going to look through the bottom of the block and we're going to look at um any shrouding that might be going on on cylinders that aren't centered and show you how that looks and uh how i need to modify the block uh to clearance the push rod because the, the angle of the push rods be a little different it actually is going through the deck of the block and i'll show you what we're going to do about that so I'll turn you back on in just a minute. Okay, so here is um, the block on its side, and we have the head uh, loosely on. And this is looking uh, from the bottom up at the chamber, and this is cylinder number five. And if you remember right, cylinder number five is the one, um, one of the ones that I uh, centered. So two and five are centered. And as you can see up in here, we have a nice, uh, even, um, 
uh, amount of the chamber in the cylinder. And you know, it looks uh, pretty good. Now if we move over to six, you can see uh, this one is not so centered. Um, and it should be about 80 thousandths off. Um, but uh, as you can see, all the valves uh, fit into the chamber okay. And uh, we shouldn't really have much shrouding. So I, overall, uh, I think it um, should work okay. Now, if you were to do this in three pieces, uh, you would still have um, overhang, but you'd have about half as much as I have here. So it'd be half the distance. So it'd be a little bit more centered in each one, but you'd have that in each chamber. So uh, you wouldn't have any of them that are perfectly centered like this one. Um, they would still be about 40 thousandths off on each side. So. Yeah, so here's five again, as you can see centered, and here is uh, four, and as it a one, but on the opposite side, um, it's uh, hanging over a little bit. But again, I think this will be fine. If you know, if you have thoughts about that, please let me know in the comments. Um, here's uh, three. Uh, here is two, and again, another one of the ones I had uh, centered. And here is one. But yeah, uh, overall, we shouldn't have any problems with the valves wanting to crash into the cylinder walls or anything. And like I said, if you want um, slightly better uh, centering, you would do three pieces if you think that's worth to you. But uh, this should run just fine. I hope. Um... I will probably try to do individual like AFR to like check and read the plugs and all that uh, to know just what them cylinders are off or doing. But yeah. All right, let's take a quick look at the block. Uh, if any of you are familiar with these 300 blocks, uh, you know that they don't normally look like this. I cut all these out with just a cutoff wheel and then I shaped them up a little bit with just you know uh, some sand rolls and the reason we have to do this is because the push rod would sit right here where that rail usually would be so you have to cut it out to make clearance and that's all you really have to do so far so let's uh, throw the head on and take a look at how the push rods will look. It'll give you an idea. These aren't the right ones. They're too short, and we don't have the lifters in, but it'll give you an idea of how the valve train is going to look. Okay, so here we just have the head sitting on, uh, and the deck still needs cut, so it's not sitting on the block perfect, but like I said, this gives you an idea, and me an idea, of how everything is going to look, and lets me see where I need to clearance yet for the push rod because there are still a couple areas, but they will be in a little bit more when they're actually sitting on the lifters. And then we'll get up in here. So I need to clearance there a little bit. Right there a little bit. And over here a little bit and then possibly right here on the head I don't know if you can see that but possibly right there see if we can get a light on here yeah there we go so like I said coming along pretty well I got measure for push rods yet that is uh, next on the to-do list once the head gets cut and we finalize all the machining. And we're getting closer. Uh, let's take a look at the intake now and we'll see how that's coming along. So here's what I got so far. This was originally one of them really cheap uh, sheet metal LS intakes that you see. I think I got this one on like AliExpress for a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, uh, something like that. I didn't really do any footage of me cutting it up because I kind of I was trying to do it, you know, in a nice way, but 
there is no real nice way to cut one of these up, so I ended up just kind of butchering it. Uh, <laughs> and it's getting close. You know, I still got to, like, fit up some gaps and whatnot with what I have here. And then the plan is to just get one big piece, cover all this, uh, and we'll reuse the back piece, and then top. Get it all back together, and this should work as an intake, but to be honest, this intake is just horrible. I understand why uh, people say they're so bad. Like, it doesn't look bad, right? Like, it has, it has, what do you call these, um, a velocity stack in, inside, right? So, like, you think that, you know, that, that's not bad, right? It's just not, not just a hole from the intake, so that, that that's kind of cool. But, like, if you look down in this thing, there's just a horrible lip on each side of the runner. So I'm gonna have to go in there and blend that all in. But I understand why these make uh, such crap power <laughs> for LS engines and why everybody says they're bad. So we'll take care of that though. The short runner should be okay for what we're gonna do. I mean, it's gonna be a higher revving engine. Like it's not gonna be great, obviously. And maybe in the future, you know, I can get like a real custom intake made. But this is what we're gonna have for now. And we're gonna shove a bunch of boost in, into it eventually anyway. So. It should be fine, but we'll have more progress on this as it comes. That's just what we have right now and kind of the idea of what I wanted to do. So is, was it worth cutting up intake? I don't know. Depends on what you got laying around, I suppose. Depends on how good you are at fabbing. So if you've made it to the end of the video, uh, thank you very much. I know how easy it is to get distracted these days. And it was a rather long video, but you guys, the real MVPs. Um, if you guys want to support me, all you got to do is like, comment, subscribe, share my videos. And um, if you feel like you want to support me even more, there's Patreon. And uh, I really would like to see this engine running before the end of the year. We have a lot of work to do yet, and I'm going to try my darndest. So until next time, uh, make sure you're subscribed to see any new videos when they come out. But uh, until next time, everybody, uh, I will see you later. Y'all have a great day.